How can an economy grow and develop? Why is economic development uneven? These are questions that economists investigate and analyze. Before we can dive deeper into answering them, we must first distinguish between economic growth and economic development. Growth refers to an increase in real GDP over time. If real GDP is growing at a faster rate than population, then real GDP per capita will increase, and that means that the standard of living is improving. However, just because the standard of living is improving, which is a purely material measure, that doesn't mean quality of life is also improving. And this is where the distinction between growth and development becomes necessary. Development is a more multi-dimensional concept that refers to increases in standard of living along with reductions in poverty, increased access to education and health care, improvements in environmental sustainability, and improvement in overall quality of life for the average citizen. Economic growth and standard of living are very one-dimensional concepts that are more focused on material measures and thus very quantitative in nature, while economic development and quality of life are more multi-dimensional and qualitative in nature. Economic growth can occur in the short term and the long term. Short-term growth refers to an increase in actual output and is represented by a rightward shift of aggregate demand from AD1 to AD2, while long-term growth refers to an expansion of the economy's potential output and is represented by a rightward shift of aggregate supply from AS1 to AS2. However, economic growth does not always translate to economic development. If this economic growth is jobless, futureless, ruthless, or voiceless, then it is less likely to translate to economic development. Jobless growth is one that destroys more jobs than it creates, such as growth driven by replacing workers with more capital and machines. Futureless growth is one that harms the environment, such as growth that is accompanied by deforestation and excessive carbon emissions. Ruthless growth is one that does not help the poor escape from poverty and leads to further increases in economic inequality. Lastly, voiceless growth is one that is accompanied by taking away people's freedoms and their human rights. Therefore, even if real GDP is increasing and the amount of economic activity is rising, this growth will less likely translate to improvements in economic development if it is jobless, futureless, ruthless, or voiceless. Economic development will usually occur alongside economic growth that creates more jobs, helps the poor escape poverty, conserves and protects the environment, and expands people's voices and rights, which is why we say that development is a more multidimensional concept. A good diagram to illustrate economic development is the poverty cycle. Poverty is the condition of having a low income, which then leads to low savings and investment in all forms of capital, human capital, physical capital, and natural capital. Low levels of capital then translate to low levels of productivity, which leads to low incomes, trapping the poor in the condition of poverty and continuing the cycle. There are many barriers to growth and development and strategies to overcome those barriers and eventually help poor individuals or poor societies escape the poverty cycle. The barriers to growth and development are usually a combination of economic, social, and political barriers. It's important to remember that there is a diverse mix of barriers for a diverse number of less economically developed countries, LEDCs, as well as more economically developed countries, MEDCs. The economic barriers that trap countries in poverty due to low savings and low levels of capital are rising income inequality, capital flight, and lack of access to infrastructure, healthcare, education, and appropriate technology. It's usually the middle class in any country that saves the most while the rich spend a lot of their money on luxuries or send their savings abroad to offshore tax havens, also known as capital flight. Also, low levels of human capital due to lacking access to healthcare and education, 
as well as insufficient infrastructure, will all lower the levels of productivity of the FOPs and thereby perpetuate the poverty cycle. The economic barriers that trap a country or community in low levels of income are lack of access to international markets, possibly due to geography, or trade barriers enacted by trade partners, which increases the costs of producing and transporting exports and erodes the revenue gained from selling those exports on the global market. Other economic barriers that perpetuate the poverty cycle are having a large informal economy that is unregulated and untaxed, a high level of indebtedness, over-specialization in the production of primary products like oil or agricultural products, as well as tropical climates and endemic diseases. Moreover, there are social and political barriers to growth and development, like gender inequality, a lack of good governance and high levels of corruption, as well as unequal political power and status, all of which trap the country in the low levels of capital part of the poverty cycle. This is because when women's well-being is suppressed or deprioritized, it also affects the health care and education of their children, and so leads to lower levels of human capital for future generations. And high levels of corruption deter savers and investors, again contributing to low levels of financial and physical capital. In addition, weak legal and banking systems and ineffective taxation structures will lower the availability of funds needed for investment in pro-development projects. Many LEDCs also suffer from having weak property rights that deter investors who fear losing their investments. Since LEDCs can face a variety of these economic, social, and political barriers to growth and development, governments need to craft a variety or a mix of strategies to overcome these barriers and help their respective countries achieve higher levels of growth and development. There are many strategies to overcome the barriers to growth and development. Some are more growth-focused and some are more development-focused. The key thing to remember here is that governments need to use a mix of these strategies based on the unique set of barriers their countries face. The first set of strategies are trade strategies like import substitution, export promotion, and economic integration. These strategies help overcome lack of access to international markets and help the country earn more export revenue that can then be invested in pro-development projects and so break the low incomes part of the poverty cycle. Several LEDC governments also aim to attract Inward Foreign Direct Investment, or FDI, which is often carried out by multinational corporations, or MNCs. But these investments can create social and environmental problems if not properly regulated. FDI can also help break the low incomes part of the poverty cycle. Countries that face the barrier of over-specialization and over-dependence on primary sector production can pursue diversification policies to build other industries that can propel the country's economic growth. Governments also use market-based supply-side policies like trade liberalization, deregulation, and privatization to increase investor confidence and so lead to more private sector investment, though these policies can sometimes worsen income inequality. Interventionist policies are better at addressing income inequality, but they are costly. Interventionist policies like redistribution policies, education programs, health programs, and the provision of infrastructure are all both pro-growth and pro-development, but may be restrained by lack of funds or lack of political willpower to pursue these policies. Interventionist policies improve the country's physical and human capital, and so can help break the low levels of capital part of the poverty cycle. Governments can also seek and accept foreign aid from MEDCs, though foreign aid can sometimes be tied to conditions that may not necessarily be favorable to development goals. Seeking multilateral development assistance from institutions like the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund is also a strategy to overcome lack of funds for pursuing pro-growth and pro-development goals, 
though the conditions attached to such assistance play a key role in their effectiveness, or lack thereof. Both foreign aid and multilateral development assistance can help break the low incomes part of the poverty cycle. Encouraging social enterprise is also a popular strategy for growth and development. Social enterprise is carried out by private sector firms who seek both to generate profit as well as pursue some social or environmental objective like reducing pollution through the use of recycled materials. Social enterprise tends to combine the profit motive that encourages efficiency with some pro-development goal like improving education or access to clean water. Institutional reforms are also necessary strategies for growth and development, like improving access to banking through the use of mobile banking and microfinance, as well as increasing women's empowerment, reducing corruption through encouraging good governance, as well as strengthening property and land rights to boost investor confidence and encourage more foreign and domestic investment. Social enterprise and institutional reforms can both help break the low levels of capital part of the poverty cycle. While pursuing the appropriate strategies to overcome their barriers to growth and development, countries are generally advised to utilize a combination of market-based approaches driven by the profit motive, as well as interventionist approaches driven by the needs of society as a whole.